Have you ever wondered why we sometimes make choices we later regret? What makes us susceptible to these missteps? Today we delve into an exploration of our own heart, illuminating the hidden corners where deception may lurk. And no, we're not talking about the physical organ that pumps blood through our bodies. We're speaking of the heart as the Bible defines it, a complex assembly of our emotions, desires, and thoughts. According to the scriptures, our hearts hold an immense power. However, they can also be a source of deceit. In book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse nine, it is written, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? This passage is a sobering reminder of our human condition, of the internal struggles we face, and of the constant need to guard our heart. Let's not despair. Even as we acknowledge the potential for deceit within us, there's also tremendous potential for goodness, love, and wisdom. This is why understanding our heart is so crucial. Recognizing the susceptibility of our hearts to deception, we equip ourselves with the knowledge to navigate these intricate inner landscapes. This is not about cultivating a sense of fear or distrust within ourselves. Quite the opposite. This journey is about fostering self-awareness, about nurturing a deeper understanding of our own nature, and about arming ourselves with the wisdom to make choices that align with our highest good. So, with a hopeful and loving spirit, we embark on this exploration. As we enter the scriptures, we invite you to reflect on your own experiences, your own heart. Consider the moments when you felt misled by your own desires or emotions and how those moments have shaped your journey. As we embark on this journey today, let us open our hearts and minds to the wisdom that can protect us from our own deceptions. When we speak of the heart in the biblical sense, we're not just talking about the organ that pumps blood through our bodies. In fact, the heart, as referred to in the Bible, is the epicenter of our emotions, desires, and thoughts. It's the core of our being, the seed of our moral and ethical compass. The heart is where we wrestle with right and wrong, where we feel love and hate, joy and sorrow, peace and turmoil. It's the place where our deepest desires and fears reside, where our dreams are born and where our decisions are made. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This verse isn't just a poetic exaggeration. It's a profound truth about the human condition. Our hearts can be incredibly deceptive, leading us astray with desires and thoughts that seem right, but ultimately lead to destruction. The heart's deceit is subtle, convincing, and often self-serving, making it all the more dangerous. Let's delve into some biblical narratives to illustrate the heart's deception. Think about King David, a man after God's own heart. Yet his heart deceived him when he saw Bathsheba. He allowed his desire to overrule his discernment, leading him into a path of adultery, deceit, and ultimately murder. His heart whispered, you deserve her, take her. And he did, causing a ripple effect of pain and consequences that lasted generations. Then, there's the story of mankind's fall. Eve's heart was deceived by the serpent's cunning words. She saw that the fruit was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. Her heart whispered, you can be like God, eat it. And she did, bringing sin into the world. These stories aren't just ancient tales, they're mirrors reflecting our own heart's deceptions. How many times have we been swayed by our desires convinced ourselves of something we knew was wrong or justified our actions because our hearts whispered, it's okay, do it. But here's the thing, friends. Deception starts small. It's a slight bending of the truth, a tiny rationalization, a small compromise. Then it grows, feeding on our desires and thoughts until it influences our actions. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Our hearts are like fertile soil, ready for seeds to be planted. If we plant seeds of truth, love, 
and righteousness, we'll reap a harvest of goodness. But if we allow seeds of deception, lust, and unrighteousness to be planted, we'll reap a harvest of destruction. We need to understand that our hearts are not always trustworthy guides. They can lead us astray, lure us into harmful situations, and deceive us into thinking we're right when we're wrong. But the good news is, we're not left to navigate our heart's deceptions alone. We have the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and the community of believers to help us discern truth from deception, right from wrong. We are often lured and enticed by our own desires. Our hearts can lead us down paths we never intended to walk. But with God's help, we can learn to discern our heart's deceptions, guard against them, and walk in the light of His truth. What happens when we let deceit of our heart rule? Let's travel in time and look at the life of Saul, Israel's first king. Saul was a man chosen by God, a leader with immense potential. Yet, over time, a seed of jealousy sprouted in his heart. When the people have started lauding David, the conqueror of the giant Goliath, they chanted, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. Saul's heart was engulfed by a fierce jealousy. He let this jealousy guide him, taint his judgments, and eventually it overwhelmed him. It coerced him into irrational choices, like attempting to assassinate David, who was nothing but faithful to him. Ultimately, Saul's jealousy led his downfall. Now you might ponder, I am not a ruler, and I don't intend to murder anyone. How is this relevant to me? This is relevant because all experience our own Saul moments. It could be a workmate's promotion that kindles a spark of envy in us, or a friend's triumph that makes us reevaluate our own accomplishments. When we let these feelings guide us, they can steer us towards bitterness, harmful behavior, and ultimately, they can steal our joy and peace. We have Solomon's story. Solomon, the sagacious king, renowned for his wisdom and prosperity, was ensnared by idolatry. Despite being endowed with wisdom from God, he let his heart's desires lead him off track. He wed foreign women who turned his heart towards other gods. His heart didn't commit to his God, which led to his downfall and his kingdom's collapse after his demise. In our lives, we might not worship graven idols, but there are numerous things that can substitute God in our hearts. It could be an obsession with success, money, or even relationships. When we let these things become our lives focal point, we like Solomon are led astray. The repercussions can be broken relationships, dissatisfaction, and a life that feels vacant despite earthly accomplishments. In today's world, we observe the outcomes of a deceived heart in various ways. Consider the person who yearns for others' approval and validation. They might resort to lying, pretending to be someone they're not, simply to belong or be liked. This deception, stemming from their heart's desire, can to a life filled with anxiety, fear, and isolation. Or consider someone driven by avarice. Their heart's deception might coerce them to cheat, steal, or exploit others' wealth accumulation. The consequences, shattered trust, broken relationships, and a life filled with guilt and regret. These stories, both ancient and contemporary, serve as a stark reminder of the potential outcomes of letting our heart's deceit guide us. It's a slippery slope, and the fall can be difficult and painful. So, what's the solution? As we learn, we must guard our hearts with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. For out of the heart come evil ideas, murders, adulteries, sexual immoralities, thefts, testimonies, blasphemies. The heart is the source of life and we must shield it. We must guard our hearts with utmost diligence, for they are the source of life's issues. What strategies can we employ to protect ourselves, given the deceptive nature of our hearts? This question will be our wrestling opponent. Delving into the practical strategies the Bible offers to guard our hearts against deceit is our primary focus. Daily scripture reading is at the heart of these strategies. 
In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul encourages us to be transformed by renewing our minds. This renewal is ongoing, a daily commitment to immerse ourselves in God's Word. It's similar to bathing in a river of truth, cleansing ourselves from the grime of the world's lies and deceptions. Immersion in the scriptures helps us understand God's heart, His ways, and His will. This understanding serves as a compass, guiding us through life's labyrinth of and deceptions. However, this isn't just about reading the Bible for sake of it. It's about meditating on God's Word, allowing it to seep into the core of our, our being. It's about letting God's Word challenge our thoughts, attitudes, and actions. It's about the Word shaping us, molding us, and transforming us to reflect Christ. Let's highlight regular self-examination and prayer. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my thoughts. And see if there is any wicked way me, and lead me in the way everlasting. This plea comes from a heart that recognizes its own inclination towards deception. It's the cry of a heart yearning to be pure, aligned with God's will. Regular self-examination, enhanced by prayer, is a potent remedy against the poison of deceit. It's akin to shining a spotlight on our heart's hidden corners, exposing any lurking deception and inviting to cleanse and purify us. That said, as vital as personal practices are, we cannot neglect the importance of community on our Christian journey. We were not to traverse life alone. We require the support, encouragement, correction, and accountability that a community of believers provides. A solitary Christian is a vulnerable Christian. The deceiver relishes the chance to victimize those who are alone, those without anyone to challenge their misguided thoughts or actions. But when we envelop ourselves with godly friends who aren't afraid to tell the hard truths, we are better prepared to resist deception. Lastly, let's not forget the Holy Spirit's role in protecting us against deception. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. The Spirit is our counselor, our teacher, our guide. He convicts us of sins, helps us comprehend God's word, and empowers us to live pleasingly before yielding to the Spirit's guidance makes us less susceptible to deception. Remember, these strategies aren't magic formulas guaranteeing a life free from deception. They are tools, when consistently and prayerfully used, that can safeguard our hearts against deceit. They are practices incorporated into our daily lives, can enable us to walk in truth and righteousness. Let's remember, are not fighting this battle alone. God is on our side. He has gifted us His Word, Spirit, and His community to empower us to stand against deception. He is our fortress, our shield, our defender. With Him on our side, we can boldly confront the deceiver and declare, You will not deceive me. I am defended clothed with righteousness and guided by the Holy Spirit. So let's commit ourselves to these practices. Let's engross ourselves in God's Word daily regularly examine our hearts, pray persistently, engage in a vibrant Christian community, and yield to the Spirit's guidance. Be vigilant, alert, and watchful, understanding that the battle against deception is daily. We may stumble, we may fall, but a gracious God who picks us up, dusts us off, and sets us back on the path of righteousness. With help, we can defend our hearts against deceit. As 614 implores us, let us gird ourselves with truth and don the breastplate of righteousness to guard our hearts. Is our strategy, our battle, put it into action and stand firm against the deceiver's schemes. With God's help, we can guard our hearts, walk in truth, and live a life that glorifies His name. While our hearts may deceive us, we have a hope that does not disappoint. This hope is found in Christ Jesus, the steadfast anchor of our souls. In the midst of our struggles and the deceit of our hearts, we find hope in the promise of Christ. Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. 
is the transformative power of Christ. He renews and transforms our hearts, leading us away from deception and towards truth. This transformation is not an overnight process. It involves a continuous commitment to practices that strengthen our hearts against deceit. This commitment includes daily reading of the scriptures, regular prayer and self-examination, and living in accountable community with fellow believers. Also involves leaning into the Spirit, the helper promised by Christ himself, who guides us into all truth and shields us from deception. The Holy Spirit works within us, renewing our minds and conforming our hearts to reflect the love and righteousness of Christ. Our journey of faith, we will face trials and temptations. Our hearts may lead us astray, we may stumble and fall. But in these moments, remember that we are not defined by our failures. We are defined by Christ, who loves us, forgives us, and promises to transform our hearts. Let us be encouraged today. Let us commit to practices that guard our hearts against deceit. Let us lean into the transformative power of Christ, knowing that in Him, our hearts can be renewed. Here is a prayer for all of us. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, amen. Thank you for accompanying me on this blessed journey. The faith and resilience that comes with walking in faith has hopefully inspired you and we hope to have been able to assist you on this journey. Now we extend an invitation, not just for you to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Please visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com. You'll find a free blog, beautiful canvas art, and a range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path that leads to awakening the most righteous version of yourself. When you stand with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to disseminate the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in countless hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a tangible difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. May God be with you. Amen. Amen.